Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our soon coming King. I wanted to share on this topic here, you know, as we come up to the season where we observe the the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, I just, I wanted to get a little into more depth in, in, in the price that he paid. Uh, because I know a lot of people just don't really consider, you know, the, the depth of what he suffered, that being able to see the depth of his love. Because in what he suffered declares to us the depth of his love. And uh, I just, I wanted to just take a look at it and share, you know, maybe there's somebody out there who doesn't even know. So, and if you do know, you know, I just pray that it would retouch your heart, his love. Um, and then I got to say, this isn't the first time I've done this because this is really hard to get through, you know, and keep your composure, okay? But anyways, uh, let's get into it. I'm going to start in Matthew 26, verse 67, and this is right after they had arrested the Lord and took him, you know, in to be tried and on his way to crucifixion. It says, uh, in verse 67, then did they spit in his face and they buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So this is when the people, you know, Pilate wanted to let him go. He said, I find no fault in this man. But they refused. They wanted Barabbas released instead. And they said, Crucify him and his blood be upon us and upon our children. So at this point, you know, you could see he wasn't having any fun. Being spit on surely is disgusting and not fun. And like it says here, he was punched and he was also slapped. Okay, and then scourged. And uh, Romans, scourging, it was considered part of the impalement process. And sometimes it was so horrible that the victim died from it. You know, they had limits on how many stripes because it would kill a man. But, you know, when you were on your way to be crucified, uh, they knew you were dying anyway, so they took liberty. But anyway, so we know that he was in pretty bad shape. I mean, most people know that that whip, it had pieces of, like, glass and bone and stuff on the end of the the strips. So, you know, it took out chunks. It wasn't just like, a, you know, like you see back in the old slave movies where they'd whip them with a whip and they'd have those slices which also were probably horrible but what the lord experienced was much worse okay and then after enduring all of this and being you know just flesh open so after that it goes on to tell us in matthew 27 27 through 31 then after that the soldiers of the governor took jesus into the common hall gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they stripped him that's humiliating. They put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed. And they smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put on his own put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. So after all the horrible suffering, then he got to suffer more. Um, it was pretty bad. Uh, Luke twenty three twenty six says, As they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus you know, normally the person will carry their cross up to their crucifixion, but Jesus couldn't do it. He was just too messed up. Okay, and then it tells us in uh, Psalm 22, verse 14 through 16, this is a prophecy concerning the crucifixion. It says, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaves to my jaws. And you have brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. 
So here we see when he finally gets to the cross, okay, his bones are out of joint. They say that dislocations hurt worse than breaks. I don't know. I've dislocated knees and shoulders, and I can tell you it is very painful. But I've never broke a bone, so I couldn't say, like they say, that a dislocation hurts worse than a break. But I, I know the scriptures say that, you know, at the end, when a man's on the cross for, you know, that punishment, um, they would break their, their knees so that they could die. And, you know, Jesus died before the breaking of the knees because it was written, a bone of him shall not be broken. But it probably would have been less painful if his bones had been broken rather than out of joint. When he said, my heart is melted like wax, you know, melted in the midst of my bowels. I mean, his heart was broken. You know, he came to his own. They received him not. He was rejected of men. You know, it's painful to your heart to be rejected. He said his strength is dried up like a pot shirt. You know, everything he went through, surely he had no strength left. He was thirsty. And when it says they compassed me, dogs have compassed me. In the word of God, dogs refers to those who are unbelieving Gentiles. You know, not God's people. The assembly of the wicked that enclosed him, that was the assembly that were supposed to be his people that rejected him. The ones to whom he said, you of your father, the devil. The ones who said, your blood be upon us and upon our children. Okay. So again, more pain on the cross. You know, the piercing of his hands and feet. Isaiah 52, 14, it tells us his visage was so marred more than any man. That means his appearance was more disfigured or corrupted, mutilated more than any man. And his form, his body, more than the sons of men. I'm sure it was not a sight that was uh, refreshing to look upon. And he did it. He did it knowing that mostly he would be rejected of men. Like the word says, he came to his own and they rejected him. He's still to this day in the earth rejected of men. The men and women in this earth, they reject him. They hate him. But he still did it all, knowing he would be rejected. Knowing that there would only be a few. He knew what he did would only be for a few because the way to salvation straight as a gate narrows way few there be that find it but he came and willingly suffered anyway it says in Isaiah 56 through 7 I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair I hid not my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me therefore shall I not be confounded therefore have I set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be ashamed. You know, the word says that God highly exalted him. He highly exalted him. The fullness of the Godhead bodily, the word become flesh, is highly exalted. His name is the name above all names. Because this, because he loved and laid down his life. When it says he gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to them that plucked off the hair, this is a piece here of something he experienced that was not written in the New Testament scriptures. And it has a it has a meaning why this happened to him. And I wanted to share that. Ezra 9, 2 through 3. This was uh, during a time when Israel had disobeyed God's law because it was written that they should not take wives for them or their sons, nor should they take of their sons for their daughters. And it says, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yeah, the hand of the princes and rulers has been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down a it's like astonished, astonished. So, this was just like a, a sin, a grave sin in the land of Israel. And then Nehemiah 13.25 is another 
a record of the same incident. It says, And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. So we can see what this is about here. And how many of us, you know, have been unequally yoked together with non-believers, whether in marriage or, or even in, you know, intimate fellowship. You know, we're not to be, we're supposed to come out of the world and be separate. And even today, like it says, uh, if you're you're in a covenant marriage and and you're like the non-believing spouse wants to leave the believing spouse, the believing spouse is free. They're not bound, but they're not to remarry except a person of faith. You know, the Lord is same yesterday, today, and forever. This is still to be this way today. And you can just take a look out there at Christianity and you can see it's all mingled up in the world. And Jesus paid the price for this sin too. He paid the price for all of our sin. And the word goes on to tell us in Isaiah 53, 5. It says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay, and then in John twelve twenty seven, 27, um, when he was heading the way of the cross, and he was in, you know, great heaviness in prayer, he said, Now is my soul troubled, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. I mean, Jesus specifically came and did what he did, knowing what he was going to suffer, knowing what he was going to endure, knowing that only few, only few would follow him. And then in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 says, The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he knew he was going to be the Passover lamb, and he knew his blood was going to be that Passover blood that would cover us, that the death angel would pass over us, and we would have life and be freed from the grave and from death. That same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. And I'm telling you, you do show the Lord's love till he comes. Because in this sacrifice, in, in this Passover lamb's sacrifice we see the God who so loved the world we see him as he truly is his nature that he is love you know that he so loved us like Jesus said there's no greater love than that a man lay down his life for his friends and he laid down his life for us and then that love it is a love worth praise, worth honor, worth glory, worth thanksgiving. It, it is worth everything. It says in Revelations 1, 5 through 6, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In Galatians 1, 3 through 5, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And in Hebrews 13, 12 through 15, and this is the last scripture, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, or outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, forever, eternally. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. You know, for what he did, it says because of what he did, 
laid down his life. God has highly exalted him, given him a name above all names. And there is salvation in no other name. There's no other name named under the heavens by which you can be saved. You know, by which that death angel can pass over you. Our flesh may die, but our spirits live. And you are going to be in God's presence or you are going to be in a bad place. So, you know, if you haven't received his gift of salvation through faith and his sacrifice, you know, I pray that you do. I pray that God touches your heart and you will receive him. And I also wanted to talk about this part just a little bit here. You know, it says he suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him outside the camp. Okay, back when Jesus died, like I said, he came to his own. They received him not. He was rejected. You know, that he was the cornerstone. They rejected. Um, but we also, you know, we have to follow him outside the city just like they did back then because in his day, you know, it was Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the holy city, the city of God. Okay, but he was rejected. And he went outside the camp, and we are to follow him. Okay, bearing his reproach. Just like they crucified the Lord, they also persecuted the early church. And many were killed. Okay, by that same city. And when it says, for here we have no continuing city. That is because, because like Jesus said, the day is come when you will not worship God in Jerusalem. Nor in this mountain. But we will worship him in spirit and in truth. Because the Jerusalem below is no longer the holy city of God. But there's a holy city, a heavenly city, Jerusalem, that is going to come down out of heaven from God. That is the city. That's the one. We seek that one that is to come. Okay, this is not our home here. There's no city here. We have no city here. It is coming from above. Okay, but we must follow him. You know, and today when you look at, you know, what is called Christianity, it's like, I, I don't know about you, but... Most of the persecution I have received has been in that camp, you know. So we're going to have to suffer <laughs> just like Jesus, bearing his reproach. Even today, things do not change. You know, there's still persecution and tribulation. And like the word says in the last days, you know, brethren will betray brethren to death. Um, we will be hated of all nations. So it's just like Jesus in that scripture. What did it say? Let me find that. Um, yeah, right here. Dogs compassed me, the assembly of the wicked. He suffered the same things, you know, by the Gentiles and by believers. But they weren't, they weren't, uh, right with God believers. You know, because though they had the law of Moses and all that, they rejected him. So, but anyway, I just pray that. You know, as we go, come up to this season, you know, if you're already born again, I pray that this has somehow, you know, refreshed your heart of the depth of God's love that he has for you, the price he paid for you. And if you've not heard these things, I pray that, again, his, his love touches your heart and that you will turn to him and receive that gift of salvation that he has supplied for you, you know by the, the breaking of his own body and the shedding of his own blood. And uh, God bless you.